Welcome back to Wook Plus on Weekend Wook. I'm here with Ghost Llama. So Llama, man, uh, I don't know if you saw, they just, uh, Tom Marshall just tweeted out a little bit ago that they're having the 2023 writing session. He actually said 2023 writing session, 40 years later, still at it. So this is exciting. I'm, I mean, they do this every year, but I, I don't know. It, it's always kind of um, reassuring that at this stage, 40 years into their career, they're still creating new content and that they're right. still going at it. And they, they, they haven't done it since COVID though, right? So the last writing session, I believe, was in 2020, but it was February 2020, right. was in Annapolis. Um, and the big, I think the big takeaway from that one, if I'm not mistaken, was Lonely Trip. So, wait, when did everything shut down? Was March 2020? Yeah, about March 2020. So it was right after that. Yeah, so this is the first session since yeah. since everything shut down. That's good, though. I mean, I'm, I'm excited to see what comes of it, you know. Yeah, sure. I think getting some more. It's crazy, though, because, like, Trey and Fish and Tom, they write so much music. If you think about how much new content we've gotten over the last six years, it's insane. But I think these sessions are very traditional and go back all the way, you know, to, like, Billy Breeze and and farmhouse and like yeah. you know what i mean so i think this kind of writing session is where the really good stuff comes out didn't, didn't sigma oasis come from a writing session like this well pro i think several right because like it was a song spanning over like eight or nine years that they compiled the sigma oasis right. um but yeah like for example the the steam tri trinity right with steam thread right. and epitaph they came from writing sessions like this um, so who knows? I mean, it's it'll be interesting to see what the next round of work comes out as and, and how it sounds. I think he's maybe moving away from the dad rock like Broadway stuff and more maybe moving into more, I don't know, existential creative. I don't know. It feels yeah. like that to me. I'm not like, you know, but I don't know. he might he might dip in his toes to some of the indie grooves, you know? Yeah, you yeah. were saying earlier you think that Taboos might have an effect on it. I think it might a, a, a little bit, right? Just from a point of it's a different process. Yeah. And he's a creative guy. Like, he would try that process and see what comes of it, right? Yeah, and I mean, he talked a lot about his tone with them. And I wonder if they talked about songwriting, too. Like, I'm sure yeah. they talked more than just playing. Right, for sure. You know, and I think they would want to keep the, the songwriting closer to their vest because that's their bread and butter, right? Anybody yeah. can learn what you play. Yeah. yeah, it'll be interesting. One thing I noticed too, I, and I, I didn't realize it's such a succinct pattern, but I wanted to make a prediction. I don't think we're going to get any new studio uh, material this year. But if you look back at the last like five or six released projects, they fall every year, every other year on the even year. So 2014 was Fuego, 2016 was Big Boat, 2018 was Kazvat Vox, uh, I Rock, 2020 was Sigma Oasis, 2022 was Get More Down. And granted, Kazva and Sci Fi were Halloween, but they did. It was still a lot. And of they music. created studio versions of them and wrote them as an album, like as a project. So I think 2024. You know, coming out of the 40th celebration, we might get the next album. I think I think this is where they get their uh, touch of gray, I think, <laughs> from this writing session. 40 years in, that'd be pretty dope. Yeah, you know, I think I, I think that's when it happens. I think they find something that clicks with, like, the elder millennial, younger Gen X fan base. And they kind of take that step to go into arenas. It's funny you say that because I was just looking at some of the stats and stuff and Sigma Oasis was actually one of their, if not the most uh, critically acclaimed and well accepted albums that they've had. Like as far as oh, yeah. like cr not just fan base, but like sales and reception and critics, like it was it shot to number one on Apple Music, uh, like not jam bands or rock music. Like it was number one when it released of all music right. on Apple Music for that week. Yeah. So like it is, it is almost like they're kind of really hitting this groove with that aspect of what they do, right? Which right. is only a small portion of it, but yeah. And I, I, I think it's great, you know, because I think it's more acceptable now to be a fish fan. You know, before it was kind of like, oh, you like fish, but I think more, it's more and more acceptable now that like the jam scene as a whole is kind of growing. And I think fish is going to be the cornerstone of that for like a whole new generation. And yeah. I think this is the writing session that's going to kick that off. I agree. They're the elder wooks. 
Cool. Well, like, I guess uh, we'll call it there. We'll see what comes out, but I just wanted to get that out there. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Let us know in the comments what you think this writing session will lead to. Um, and then be sure to check out. We're doing Playing in the Sand recaps every night for this run, and we'll be back with Season 5 of Book Plus Live Wednesday. Like and subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. Thanks, Lama. Yep, thanks.